is probably different than what you imagine and much more eclectic and diverse than many people think. Thank you for coming along on our American Dream. Welcome to the American Dream, a national television show around real estate, lifestyle, and culture. A real show, not a reality show. I'm your host, Craig Sewing, and today we're taking you to Omaha, Nebraska, the Midwest, where I'm originally from. Great area, great people, and Diane Hughes, award-winning realtor, is going to show us around. Let's get the show started right now. The search is over, baby. I'm right here, and I got it. The American Dream, the only show that combats negative media, not owned by a network, commercial-free, unscripted. I got it. These are stories for you and by you. I'm Diane Hughes. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Ambassador Real Estate in Omaha, Nebraska. I own a team called the Agency Group, and I am here at one of our newest listings. I'm so excited about it in Blackstone, which is a historical area in Omaha that's been redeveloped, and that includes this house. Just 100 yards away, you're going to find the historic Cottonwood Hotel, which used to be called the Blackstone Hotel, which the neighborhood is named after. It was built in 1916, and people from all over the country would come to stay here. In fact, the butter brickle ice cream and the Reuben sandwich were both invented at the Blackstone Hotel. This whole neighborhood has been seeing a revival, including this house. We're actually still working on it, but we're getting pretty close to being done, and I think you're gonna see why Omaha is probably different than what you imagined. We have these great neighborhoods all over, and I think it's part of what makes our town so amazing and charming and much more eclectic and diverse than many people think. Before we go in, I wanted to point out the house to the right here is one of only three Queen Anne architectural style homes left in Omaha. This area has a lot of great homes that were built by famous architects. A great neighborhood to walk through. You can see all kinds of architecture from stick style to gothic revival. We have it all here, and I think it's just really beautiful to see. So as you come in this house, you're gonna start noticing details that are one of a kind to this property, which is always what's cool about a historical home. There's no two that are alike. The house was built um, in 1898. Permits were pulled in 1897 by A.J. Lunt and his wife, Jenny. They're from Racine, Wisconsin. After some time in Omaha, he did eventually leave to go back to become the mayor of Racine, Wisconsin. But the house was built to anticipate the huge social gatherings and all the parties that were involved around the World's Fair the Trans-Mississippi Exposition that was held in Omaha, Nebraska back in the summer of 1898. So there's a lot of stories and a lot of great parties that took place here, and you can almost feel the energy when you're walking through the home. The floors are exquisite, they're all original. They've redone the kitchen here. Great pain has been taken to make sure that the original details of the home have been left untouched. But this home was almost in ruins and it took a great owner to come back and take it back to what it was as a single family dwelling. Geothermal heating and cooling is something we usually only see in new construction. To operate this house and heat and cool it is just a fraction of what it would cost if it had a gas furnace and a regular air conditioning unit. And out back, we also have a three car detached garage with a gorgeous apartment above it that's all new. The master on the third level has been all redone. But we do have a six foot fence around the entire property. So it's like you have your own enclave in the middle of Midtown Omaha. And it's just a few short steps away. In fact, Tanner on my team and I are gonna go take a walk and we're gonna show you some sites in Blackstone. Let's take a look. Awesome. As I was 
was just telling Tanner, Blackstone was founded in the 1880s and it was a thriving area. Unfortunately, with the Great Depression and the stock market crash of 1929, it really never came back to what it was until about seven years ago. Because of the growth of UNMC, there's over 5,000 employees and 4,000 students, and it generates $5 billion for the Omaha area. Okay, let's go to Mula. We're here. I'm here hungry. It's awesome. Tequila. Let's go. <laughs> We just spent some time walking through Blackstone and we wanted to take a quick break um, for some snacks and some drinks. And I wanted to introduce you to Michael Sanchez. He is the owner and founder of Mula Mexican Kitchen and Taqueria. Tell me about why Blackstone and why Omaha? Uh, Omaha is where I'm from. Blackstone um, has a lot of heart and soul to it and I wanted to create a concept that had a lot of heart and soul. So I had to find a location that matched uh, the concept and the vision that we had. There's an energy to a Mexican restaurant that we just didn't have in Omaha. So I thought, who better than to do it than me? Right. Yeah. And it looks like you put a lot of work in how the place yeah. is appointed. And I know as someone who used to go to Mexico a lot for my job, it yeah. really does feel authentic. Thank you. Yeah, the, the lights here, those are custom lights handmade in Mexico City. When possible, we try to import as much stuff from Mexico to give it that kind of street feel and authenticity. So Absolutely. I saw some of the pictures of Virgin Mary yeah. and all of it yeah. brings back. Some of that's my grandma's. Actually, it's that picture and there's some other ones that we have that are actually straight from my grandma's house. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, about your grandma, she was also in the business? She was, yeah. 1976. Her my grandfather started their Mexican restaurant in Ralston um, and I grew up in that business so working in it for the first 18 years of my life I got out of town and said I'm never doing that again and then it sucked me back in later in my life. I think you've done a great job and I know that tequileria is in your name for a reason Yeah. Yep. and so I don't know much um, about tequila and I'd love to get some tidbits from you. Absolutely. I think Tanner can be our taster. Absolutely. All right. Sounds good. Let's do it. <laughs> This is called Maestro do Bel, uh, the, the Cristalino. This tequila is actually, it's an aged tequila. When a tequila ages in the oak barrels, it gets the color. So when you see like a, a gold tequila or darker tequila, that just means that it's aged for a while and it takes on the characteristics of the barrel. This is aged, but then they filter out the color. It's very unique. So that's where it gets the name Cristalino. So it's gonna have, it's gonna have the depth um, and kind of the soul of a really well-aged tequila, but then the crisp kind of mouthfeel of uh, like a Blanco or an unaged tequila. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. All right, amigo. Okay. I guess I better have one with you, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> Making toast to Blackstone. Toast to Blackstone, <laughs> cheers. Awesome, cheers. That was good tequila. It's good, right? This is amazing, though. Thank this you. Awesome. Yeah. So this is a big part of our job here is educating people on tequila because yeah, that doesn't taste like no. what you would expect. There's a whole wide world that we need to break open right. for you because it's very drinkable and it's one of the most complex spirits in the world. So mm -hmm. that is awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to Absolutely. meet with us and Absolutely. congratulations on all your success. Thank you. Same to you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you very so much. much. Yeah. Okay, Tanner, I've never done a tequila shot before, I have to admit, that's my first time. It was awesome though, wasn't it? You did good. Yeah. Okay, now that we're in the mood, let's go to Ricky's rooftop. Let's do it, awesome. it's really cool. I see a lot of, no, I'm not okay. If there is still light, then there is still love. There is still hope, just a flicker's enough. It only takes one single flame to cut through the dark and light the way. If there is still light, then there is still I am here at Little Ricky's, home of the amazing rooftop patio in Blackstone. And I've got Chad Schumann here, who's a general manager of this property. Yes. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Awesome. So tell me how long you've been here. Well, we opened July 8th last year. Uh, okay. The project started January, just before COVID hit. Okay. Um, we worked through it and opened up uh, July 8th. 
Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah. So, and it's been just crazy ever since. And you've got some other projects going on ahead? We have other projects going on. We have Bar 39 right down the street that's okay. going to be opening. We have uh, Reno's Karaoke across the street, okay. which we opened in 2018. And how many retailers and businesses are here in Blackstone? There's 30 plus. Okay. Um, I don't know the exact number, but and all locally owned? All locally owned. Um, we have the Med Center that is a big driving force in this neighborhood. And anybody that's grown up in the neighborhood can tell you that how much it's changed. Areas like Blackstone are not catered to tourists, they're catered to our locals. Definitely. And that's a huge point of differentiation between a tourist market and Omaha. Yes. And we've had like James Beard chefs and some amazing restaurants. I know yes. that um, the sushi restaurant in Benson has been written up nationally. Omaha is a place to hang out. It's that small city. They call it that city town, I've heard. Um, I left in 89, California, Alaska, Wyoming, followed the surf and mountains. But when I came back in 2013, everything was changing. Absolutely. And yet again, I was stuck in Omaha going, why did I relieve? Right. Why did I? I left in 95. I used to run West Roads Mall and I did the grand opening for Von Mar and I went to San Antonio. And I came back as soon as I could. I wanted my daughter to be able to grow up here as well and my son to finish school here. And I was so surprised at that point in time how much things had changed. Totally changed. And of course, for in my profession as a realtor, I've seen prices, even since I went into residential real estate, just skyrocket in this area, whether it's Morton Meadows or Field Club, or just this general area. I have a listing coming up that we toured earlier right around the corner. And you know, even four years ago, you wouldn't even anticipate Morton Meadows being in the 300s. No. When I got a license, it was $100,000 yes. house. Yeah. yeah. It's just, because people want to be close and they want to be able to walk. And walkability is something Omaha never had before, and I think yes. we're starting to get it, which is a great improvement and great change. It's quite nice. It is awesome. It's, it's quite nice. We get to be here to see it. Exactly. <laughs> well, Chad, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. I can't wait to see what happens going forward. And if you have any new developments, call us, let us know. We'd love to keep in touch. We definitely will. Awesome. Thanks Cheers. so much. Cheers. Thank you. coming with us on this tour through Blackstone. If you're not from Omaha, I hope this experience motivates you to come visit us and check it out. And if you're from Omaha and you just haven't gotten out of your area of the city, I hope you learn that there's so much more to explore and you can start here. And I really want to thank you for coming along on our American Dream. And then we'll see you next month. I had the chance to sit down with Diane Hughes earlier this week. We talked about the real estate market, the challenges of inventory, and how she has separated herself as a unique professional in that marketplace, and what's really made her an award-winning realtor. Let's go check it out. Omaha, Nebraska is such an amazing area. Diane Hughes has showed us all around. We're going to have a lot of episodes doing that, showing you the lifestyles, the culture, and the real estate. Well, but let's get some real estate advice. So joining us on the call here today is Diane Hughes. And today we're going to look at what's going on in the real estate market, how you're separating yourself. Good to have you on the show. Thanks, Diane. Thanks so much, Craig. I appreciate being here. So I, I know you just had a lot of fun earlier in the show showing us around town, uh, even Tequila shots, I, I've heard. I haven't even seen what you're out there doing yet, but uh, I want our audience to know that you're an award-winning realtor, top producer out there, and there's a reason that we chose you in that market to represent our show, which just got nominated for an Emmy, by the way. So thank you for being uh, our, our voice for that market. So I wanted to talk to you today about real estate. A lot of people are just curious what the heck is going on, low inventory. What's happening in Omaha? What does what the market feel like there? Well, Pretty much it mirrors what's happening in the rest of the country. It's a very much a seller's market. And I think it's very challenging for people who work with solely buyers or who might be newer to the industry. Um, they're, you're seeing 20, 40 offers on a house. So in our situation, we know that pretty much anyone can sell a house, but our goal is always to sell it for top dollar 
and to set records even in this current situation. Um, it's going to last a while. I, I feel like we're hoping it goes away soon. But you think of every house that gets 20 offers, there's 19 other people that need 19 houses. So I think it could be a, this way for a while. And I feel like with the interest rates lower, a lot of people who maybe aren't in their forever house right now probably will be getting into one soon. Yeah, I mean, who would have thought it? A year ago, the pandemic was pretty new to us at that time. And real estate actually got impacted pretty negatively. Never would I have personally, and I don't think many people would have predicted that the market would be as on fire for real estate as, as we've seen. And you just mentioned, you know, some offers are hitting the market or properties in the market, they're getting 20 offers. And now you're hearing this talk about, well, is there a real estate bubble? Personally, I don't see how that's possible, even if rates went up, because you're right. If that one offer gets accepted, what about these other 19 buyers? So it's, it's a really crazy time. What would your advice be for buyers right now? Uh, are th I'm sure they're exhausted, right? Making offers, not getting ex accepted, especially if it's financed. W what do you think? I truly believe this is where having a good, strong agent is key. I see so many things on social media and word of mouth or in my open houses where someone says, I've lost eight offers. It just shouldn't happen. Yeah. If you educate your buyers on what it's going to take and you find things that fit the mold that gives them an opportunity, uh, for instance, let's say they can't cover any of the seller's costs or they can't cover an appraisal shortage, you probably shouldn't be looking at houses that are one day on the market. So. I think having an agent who's not only strong, but wise enough and confident enough to educate their buyers without fear of being fired or not telling them what they want to hear is huge because I'm just seeing a lot of disappointed people out there. Um, I think this is when you ask your agent, how many houses have you sold this year as a buyer's agent? What's your volume? What are some of the keys you use to win a bidding war if I'm against 20 other people? Yep, I think as the market normalizes, which I'm not really sure when that's going to happen, I don't see demand going anywhere. Rates will probably continue to stay relatively low. So it mm -hmm. may be a while before we're in a normalized market. Sellers, a lot of opportunities for you there. Let's go ahead and speak as if it was a more normal market. There's a lot that you do for sellers that really makes you unique. You know, me personally, we created this show. I've been all across the country with the best realtors really on planet Earth, but certainly in every city. And what's so fascinating is you have such a unique background and you, you worked for a mall. To, you're a marketer, brander, which I think is so relevant to real estate and most don't have that background. So share your, a little bit of your backstory. Sure. Um, I straight out of college went into the business of running shopping malls, which at the time I didn't even know existed, kind of stumbled into it because of an art minor that I had in college drawing ads for a mall that no longer exists mm. at this time. Um, and it was something that I just kind of happened organically and went into both marketing and PR of those shopping centers and then also leasing and development. So it was a really good, well-rounded position to really understand what it takes to run a mall. But in doing that, I was able to attend a lot of retail federation conferences and really got into the psychology of why people buy, how people make a decision quickly. Who makes that decision? How is it made? Is it intellectual decision or is it is it emotional? And as you probably know, it's almost always emotional and usually made by a woman if there's a woman there in the party. Mm -hmm. So we cater to that for sure. You got such a fascinating backstory. and. and the way that it's become applicable in residential real estate, it's just really cool. And I'm so excited to continue sharing it on this show. What do you think the future looks like in Omaha, Nebraska specifically? You know, here we are in Southern California and originally I'm a Midwest guy myself and I, I just see Californians continue to leave these high prices, high taxes and going places like Nebraska. Are you getting a lot of influx? And, and again, back to my original question, what do you think the next six, 12, two years looks like? I will say that last year for us with COVID was insane. It was my best year I've ever had. And even in the crash of 08, Omaha was fairly ins insulated from that. Uh, we are a very much a white collar market. We have four Fortune 500 companies here. Um, for the size of the market, that's huge. At 
one point in earlier this year, we only had 350 active listings, not including new construction for a market of a million people. It's insane. Yep. Um, I don't see that going away anytime soon. And I feel like Austin, Omaha, a lot of other white collar, quickly growing communities are finding a long-term shortage of first time home buyer markets. And I think we've been struggling with that for years and it's just escalating now. Um, I think that's what we're going to see going forward. I don't imagine interest rates raising to where they were like when I bought my first house, 10%. You know, I don't think we're anywhere close to that. Um, people complain about four and five now, and it just always cracks me up. <laughs> yeah, no, no kidding, right? Four or five percent. My background uh, many years ago, different lifetime, was in mortgage. And I remember when rates got into the sevens, and it was a really big deal then. I mean, now they might creep up into the fours and fives, and it's still historically very low. So that's, yeah. uh, you know, I know we don't have a crystal ball, but I, I, I tend to agree with you. I think with uh, population growth and Omaha is a great area, you got other parts of the country that have higher taxes, higher costs. I think you're going to continue to see more demand there. And I'm going to get back to your advice on, on for those who are buying. You better have a great agent that knows, knows how to negotiate a deal. And this is what we rely on you for, Diane. Okay, now that was a prediction of the market. Tell me future shows, American Dream. I know you're gonna get out there, show us around town, introduce us to some relationships. What do we have to look forward to? Absolutely, one of the things is being an Omaha native that I've realized I live in West Omaha, but I also specialize in historical homes and I do half of my business in Midtown with older historical homes, which you'll see here on the show. And I realized that so many people who are born and raised here live in a bubble and they don't even know how awesome their own city is and all these great new mm. communities that we have like Benson and Dundee, Blackstone, Little Bohemia, um, Midtown Crossing area. They're not familiar with it. We have some James Beard chefs. We have amazing restaurants um, and fine dining here, entertainment. And I think a lot of that I want to expose and reintroduce natives even and new people to our city as well to some of these great things that we have that are just hidden in plain sight and just educate them about your city's really cool. Let's get out and see it. Just get outside of your little one mile radius. <laughs> Love it. That's what this show is all about. Look, these little interviews we do is you're an expert realtor. People care about the American dream of home ownership, and we want to make sure we bring the information through the best in the market. This is not a reality show. This is a real show and you really are the best. So that's what we'll be doing on these interviews. But for me personally, and I know for our audience, we're really excited to see everything that Omaha has to offer, not just the real estate, but the lifestyles, the culture, the neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. Show us why people are moving there, why people love it there. Diane, thank you so much for coming on the show and I'm looking forward to future episodes. Same here, thank you. Well, we continue to hear nationwide that there's no homes on the market, low inventory, and you certainly hear about that in Omaha, Nebraska. Well, Diane Hughes seems to be doing okay. Her team, they have some great properties on the market. We asked her to show them to us so we could show you the American dream of home ownership in Nebraska. Let's go check out some of these properties. <laughs>
you enjoyed today's episode of the American Dream where we showed you Omaha, Nebraska with award-winning realtor Diane Hughes. Now, I want to remind you as well, this is a real show, not a reality show, one where we're showing you the real estate, the lifestyle, and culture. If you like this positive message and this positive media, be sure to follow us online on social media. Until next time, cheers to your American dream.